What's up guys? Learning with Rich here. In this video, let's continue our discussion about Navisworks Manage 2025. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the review tools measuring tools. Okay, so these are the tools that we will be using and we are going to discuss in this lesson. Okay, so if you're going to click that drop down arrow, measure, you can see we have here several options to measure our elements or object. Okay, so the first one is point to point, the basic. Measures the distance between two points. Okay, so let's do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and then to simplify this exercise, I'll just click the roof, this floor here. So right click and then I'll just isolate that one. So hide and selected. Okay, so this is the only model that we're going to work on now. All right, so the first one here is measure. So I'm going to select the point to point. So what does it say? So point to point says measures the distance between two points. So just like distance command in AutoCAD or the distance from uh, Revit. Okay, so point to point. So let's click that one. So point to point, click two points. Let's just zoom in. So let's click. So there's the snap. Click that. And then I'm going to click this one. All right, so there you go. And Navis work will also tells you what's the direction of that one. So that is along uh, Z axis, right? So that's the direction. So that's the distance 0 0.305 meters along the Z axis. So I'm going to click another point here. So let's say this one. By the way, if you want to terminate that, you want to start a new one, you can uh, right click on the blank space and then it will disappear so let's click again so one two all right and then i'll start another one and then i'll just click here not going to right click so i'll just click another point one and then zoom in two all right so that's now the distance so this is 10.846 meters along y axis so let's click another point so i'm going to click that point again click zoom in here click there you go then zoom out right so that is 27.676 meters along x axis all right so you can also click points like this. So I'm going to click this and then instead of selecting it along same line, so I'm going to click opposite or the other line here that is not a line. Okay, so I'm going to click that one and Revit will tell you or Navisworks will tell you the distance. Okay, so that's the distance. From this point to that point, so that is 10.850, okay? And then it also tells you the distance along y-axis and z-axis, okay? So same here with the other side. So it will tell you also the distance along z-axis and x-axis aside from the total distance. So let's click that. There you go. And then zoom out. So the total distance from that point is 27.677 meters with the x value of 27.676 and 0 0.305 meters along z axis. All right, so that is our point to point. Okay, you can also use your measuring tools alongside with the lock here. Okay. The cursor locking. So if you click the drop down arrow, you can see that you can lock that along x axis, y axis, z axis, perpendicular as well and parallel. So if I want that to be locked on x axis, all right, so I'm going to select point to point and then I'm going to lock that along x axis. Click that. 
So it's now locked along x-axis. So I'm going to click this point here, for example, that one. And then as you can see, no matter where you move your pointer, it's locking along x-axis only. Okay? Even if I move here, so it's not showing anything solid line. It only shows you dash line, but this is my x-axis here. So it's locked on that direction. So if I pick here, so it will tell me that direction because it's locked on x-axis. Alright? So... Let's try y-axis. So let's click that one. Okay, so it's y-axis. So I'm gonna pick that point. All right, again, this one is locking on y-axis. So I'm going to pick another point. There you go. So it's locking on y and same with z-axis. So let's click this one. So it only shows me dash line if it is Y or X. But if I move down, so it shows me the distance there. Okay. Click. There you go. Now, the other one here is multiple points. Okay, so I'm going to turn off my locking here. So I'll just select none. The next one here is multiple points. It measures the distance between a base point and any number of other points. All right, so let's do this. So multiple points. Click this. Okay, so let's say this is my base point. So I'm going to pick that. All right. And let's say I want to measure this one here from that point. So let's click that. Zoom out. Okay, so it now tells me that that is 11, 8, 3, 9 meters with the X value and then Y value. All right, so that's my base point. So let's say I want another distance from that point. So I'm going to pick that. All right, so it will tell me the distance from there along with X and Y. And how about here? So you click it first to terminate. All right, and then there you go. So there's now the distance. So how about this point here? Click, zoom out. All right, so that's my distance along with the Y value and Z value. So as you can see, I'm just working on same base point. Click, oh, click again. There you go. All right. So if you want this to be converted to a markup because this is just a temporary distances, okay, so if you want this to be converted to markup, so what you can do is you can select here convert to markup. So it converts the current measurement to a markup. So what will happen, Revit will create a viewpoint for this particular markup that you have. So I'm going to select convert to markup. And automatically, Revit will create a viewpoint for that, and then it will convert it to a markup. So if, let's say, I orbit my model, and then I want to go back to that markup, so I can just click that save viewpoint, and it will go back there. So of course, for to organize your markup, so make sure you rename it. Okay, so you can rename that. And then let's say you can type roof measure just to rename it. All right. Or another thing is you can also create a folder. Right click and select new folder. And then you can create there a viewpoints for your uh, roof measurements. Enter. And then after that, you can drag that inside that folder okay right okay so let's say I want a uh, point line okay so point line it measures a sequence of consecutive distances so uh, consecutive distances so let's try this one so uh, point line click that one so again let's start here first point so consecutive lines second point Okay, so that's this 
uh, distance and then we want to add this point here this distance here click there you go so it now becomes 15.572 so it just keeps on adding so I'll just select this one there you go okay right so I'm going to save this one so I want to convert that to a markup so click that there you go right so I'm going to drag this viewpoint to that roof measurement there you go and then I'll right click that so let's say the exercise here is point line okay so this one is point to multiple points so point multiple points okay so I have this one and then this one alright so let's try other option here accumulate okay so this one if point line is consecutive distances this one is non-consecutive so it measures the total length of multiple non-consecutive distances all right so let's click that all right so let's do this so let's say i want from this point again to that point all right and then i want to add this point here as you can see it's not consecutive point i'm doing so i want to add that there you go so it's now 19.942 and let's say i want this one as well click that click this one there you go okay and let's say I want these to be saved so let's convert that to markup click that there you go let's drag that and what's that accumulate All right so right click rename accumulate all right okay so next one is angle okay very simple it measures an angle defined by three points so let's do this so angle so I want to measure the angle this one this one this one of course that's 90 degrees obviously so, but let's try so one two and then this point here three so that's 90 degrees okay so let's pick another point uh, let's say here so one two and three so that's the angle right so I say here so one two three so that's the angle so here so one two oops three okay right so let me save this convert to markup so that is for the angle oh, angle exercise so angle so what else so we have here area all right so it measures an area defined by a series of points so let's say you want to know what's the area of this roof here so let's use area click that so we are going to pick all the points so that point first point one all right two three uh, four sometimes you need to click again click all right click that there you go click so I want to measure the area of the roof and there you go so that's the area so four one zero five nine oh two square meters so let's convert that to markup click so this is for our area exercise okay and then the last one is for the coordinates so single point it displays the coordinates of a single point so let's click that so let's say you want to measure the coordinates at this point here so let's click that 
So there you go. So that's the coordinates. Click this point. That's the coordinate. Click that point. That's the coordinate. Okay? So for the coordinates, you can convert that to a markup. See, there's no option here. Okay? So basically, these are the options for us to measure our elements. So we have point to point, uh, point to multiple points, uh, point line, accumulate, angle, area, and single point. Okay? So to make it more effective, you can uh, use your measuring tools along with your cursor locking here. So if you want to lock along x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, perpendicular, or parallel. Okay? So hopefully you learned something from this video. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a nice day.